Welcome back to Taylor, it's time for another Theory Quickie. Here's a question from the FAA database. While holding a constant angle of bank in a coordinated turn, the displacement of the turn needle A increases as the airspeed decreases, B increases as the airspeed increases, or C remains constant regardless of airspeed. The needle referred to in the question is the needle on a turn and slip indicator. However, we'll be using a turn coordinator which has a small aeroplane which fulfills more or less the same function. The small aeroplane is rigged to a gyro which reacts to the speed at which the aircraft is passing through the headings. The faster we turn, the steeper the small aircraft symbol will be tilted in the instrument. So here for example, at 20 degrees angle of bank, you can see that the wing of the small aircraft is approximately just slightly more than the rate one turn indication on the turn coordinator. And a rate one turn or standard rate turn is a rate of turn which gives us three degrees per second and if you're into mathematics, the rate of turn is equal to 1091 times the tangent of the bank angle divided by the airspeed. If we do this calculation for 20 degrees angle of bank at 110 knots of true airspeed, then you can see that the rate of turn that we're going to get is approximately 3.6 degrees per second, which kind of checks out with the instrument there, seeing as this white marker here signifies a turn rate of 3 degrees per second. If you still don't believe me, I started a timer as we went through 300 degrees on the heading. Now as we're passing through west, which is about 30 degrees in total, you can see that the total time taken is 8.4 seconds. And 30 divided by 8.4 is 3.57, which is close enough to 3.6 for me, and is a definite sign that you need to learn to trust me. So let's slow this thing down and see what happens to the rate of turn. I've just made a power reduction, and I'll maintain the angle of bank as we slow down. If you keep an eye on the airspeed and the turn coordinator, what you should notice is that as the airspeed decreases, the rate of turn shown on the turn coordinator increases, so the angle of the little aircraft will actually get steeper as the airspeed slows. So my plan here is to slow the aircraft down to around 60 knots indicated airspeed, which would be around about 65 knots of true airspeed. So let's do the calculation and see how long it should take us to pass through 30 degrees once we're down at that airspeed. So we'll take 1091, multiply it by the tangent of 20 and divide it by 65. And that gives us just over 6.1 degrees per second. So at a rate of 6.1 degrees per second, passing through 30 degrees should take us just under 5 seconds. So there's a heading of 330, let's start the timer. And there's 300 and you can see it's taken about 5 seconds and if you have a look at the turn coordinator here you can see that the aircraft is showing a much steeper rate of turn than it was previously. It's important to note however that we have not changed the angle of bank and the angle of bank is maintained at 20 degrees throughout the whole maneuver. We can therefore conclude that the only thing that could have changed the rate of turn is the change in airspeed. And I've even done a fairly reasonable job of keeping my ball in the right place so that won't have affected the rate of turn too much either. And just to complete the effect here I'm now accelerating back up to normal cruise speed and you'll see here on the turn coordinator that the rate of turn shown is actually now reducing. So the answer to the question, while holding a constant angle of bank in a coordinated turn, the displacement of the turn needle, A, increases as the airspeed decreases.